Now, after playing the past four seasons at Texas Tech, Marquez has been working nonstop for the next chapter of his football career. Their gym opened up in 2012, and two years later, Boston's BJJ Midland has an enrollment of over 100 students and competes in the best tournaments the sport has to offer. And by the looks of things, they're doing something right. Baseball is a simple game. You throw the ball, you catch the ball, you hit the ball. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes it rains. For the Midland Rockhounds, it was a lot of losing up until last night, eight straight to be exact. Welcome back. We are live at West Texas Fiesta. The party's just getting started here, and you can bet you're on your bottom dollar that they're celebrating over in a wink. So the weather may be cool in Oxnard, California, compared to here in West Texas, but things got pretty heated in practice, and for the Cowboys to make the playoffs for the first time since 2009, this may be just what they needed. Like Coach Clay said, a lot to look forward to next season and beyond. The bar has been set, and there's certainly no shame in playing in the final day of the calendar sport. And one thing is for certain, the Grady Wildcats are back on the 1A hoops map. Sometimes you got to get away from home for your college experience. That couldn't be more true today for one Midland High student. Coach, talk about uh, just what brought you here. What, what made you want to be the face of the new football program. The loss may sting now, but the future of Fort Stockton Athletics is awfully bright, especially when you consider both the baseball and softball teams advancing to the final eight teams left in the UIL Texas State Tournament. In other news, with the rains we've had this spring and today, you may have noticed more plants and also more bugs. Marshall, yeah, I'm here at Security Bank Ballpark. It looks like we needed all the superheroes we can get, but it looks like the rain's gonna pass with me right now. I've got Cortland and Micah. Cortland, who are you? I am Spider-Man. Yeah, can you show me your web? He told us five years ago that one night at the track we got rained out. There was, uh, you couldn't ride a complete lap. And uh, they were practicing jumps and he said, you know, I'm going to be in X Games. That's what I'm going to do. And here he is. Davey Johnson lives for the moment. It's just that adrenaline rush. Once you get a little taste, you want more and more and more. It's just more of a, a drug. You, you, I got to have it to keep me sane. Living on the edge has given him a longer medical record than most people will have in their lifetime. I've actually shattered my kneecap in the six pieces, my right, left and right collarbone, wrist four times. It's pr probably broken over Maybe 30 broken bones. I mean, just the list just keeps going on and on and on. Yet Johnson keeps competing and winning, setting himself up for the biggest stage in all of extreme sports events. Right here is his custom-made Texas bike he'll be riding for the motocross quarter pipe event. And in his backyard, he's been working on a top secret trick for six months that he's ready to show to the world. I will say I'll be doing a body varial. I'll be letting go of the bike, I'll tell you that, but it's a top secret trick. Uh, it's probably the first body burial ever done on a quarter pipe. You just kind of have to see it. To, uh, it'll make you go, wow, that's for sure. It's one thing for Johnson to represent West Texas. It's another for him to be the only Texan. And it's truly a feat for the 20 year old to be the only American in the event competition. And he takes it all in stride. He's kind of the oddity in this sport. Uh, um, it's a very loud sport. He's kind of a quiet guy, um, but uh, he's also the guy they can't ignore either because he does come up with these fantastic tricks. It's pretty cool. Although I don't do football or anything like that, it, I still stand out. You don't need to play pigskin to make the Permian Basin proud. Johnson will be squaring off against seven of the world's best the event has to offer. Those are the people I kind of look up to. Like, they're my heroes and all that. It's just kind of weird to go up against them. So there's a little rivalry, I guess, now. And in a sport where sponsorship dollars can be scarce, it won't matter whether he wins or loses. It can only get better from here. Come check on Davey about June 15th and <laughs> see how things change for him. I think it's going to be... I don't think there's going to be a ceiling. Reporting from Gardendale, Matthew Villanueva, CBS 7 Sports. He was just a phenomenal athlete to watch. Uh, I know when I, the first game he played against El Paso and Montwood, he, he took a uh, reverse all the way to the house and just to watch him run. Marquez, one man to beat. 
Inside the 40. I asked him in film session, what's it like to be able to run that fast? From 2008 to 2010, there wasn't a single player that played here at Radliff Stadium that got the fans on their feet more than Bradley Marquez as a senior left as Odessa High's all-time rushing and scoring leader. Now after playing the past four seasons at Texas Tech, Marquez has been working nonstop for the next chapter of his football career. I uh, was down in San Diego at Exos training for 10 weeks. Uh, started that at the beginning of January and uh, was there throughout a you know 10 week process and uh, came back right before pro day here at Tech and uh, was able to put down some good numbers for scouts. Countless hours have been spent preparing his body and mind for the next level. It's the kind of work ethic his coaches can't get enough of. He's always been a hard worker and uh, and his dedication and his commitment to it. Those are things that you strive to teach all your kids that's in your program. Incredible human being. I mean, he, he's why you get into coaching, to be able to coach young men like, like Bradley. Um, one of the most hardest working, respectful, unselfish players I've ever been around. And, you know, he's already a professional athlete in baseball, and so I, I'm hoping this dream of football will work out. Drafted in the 16th round four years ago for Major League Ball, the two-star athlete took the football route as the franchise paid for his college education. The New York Mets have been very supportive of me um, throughout this entire process, throughout my whole time here. And, uh, you know, they've, they've kept me on the roster. And, uh, you know, so they've stuck by me. And, you know, they're just waiting for me, you know, whenever I'm ready. Raised by a single mother, Marquez not only has been a standout on the field, but also in the classroom. It only took seven semesters for him to graduate with a degree in exercise and sports sciences while being a student athlete year round. That was the biggest thing for my mom when I got here what was to get a degree. That that's why she wanted me to come here and you know that was number one for her because she, she wanted me to have that degree. That's something she didn't have uh, or, you know, anybody in my immediate family for that matter. I'm sure he probably could have gone either way, but she rode hard on him and made him do the little things right. Heading into the draft, Marquez is projected as a late round undrafted rookie free agent. Yet history has shown favor to Red Raider receivers who didn't hear their name called. Oh, yeah, there's two guys on the wall with Danny and Wes that both made over whatever $40 million and neither one got drafted. So um, it's all about what you do when you get there. And sometimes being a free agent guy, you can actually assess what, what the best situation is for you and, and take the right invite to that camp. Former journeyman, now Lombardi Trophy winner Danny Amendola paid a visit to Lubbock recently, letting Marquez pick his brain. You no, know, he loves tech, you know, so he wants to give back. And uh, I was I'm fortunate to have a guy like that to, to look up to that's come before me from this same program. Wherever he winds up in the following months, he'll take a part of his West Texas hometown with him, remembering the place where it all started. Bradley Marquez breaks it, across the 40, 30, 20. He's into the end zone, folks. Nobody's going to catch him from 53 yards away. Odessa's always going to be my home. I've lived in the same house since I was born. My mom's still there, so when I go back, that's, that's my home, you know, and, uh, and that's, that's just, that's how I grew up. That's all I know, honestly, and, uh, you know, I had a great time here at Tech, but, but like I said, you know, that's his home for me, and I want to represent all, you know, those kids there and let everybody know that, you know, it is possible to make it out and it is, you know, possible, you know, to come from Odessa High. Marquez will now wait for his name to be called this weekend at his childhood home here in Odessa. Reporting at Ratliff, Matthew Villanueva, CBS 7 Sports.